Now, ladies and gentlemen, this man to my right, when I first came to town six years ago, he was there to pick me up. I did not know who he was until we spoke for about an hour, and then I realized this man is very special. Not only has he trained the legendary Michael Jordan, as well as the iconic Kobe Bryant, but he also is a film writer, a screenwriter. He's very deep-minded, all the way from New Jersey. He's been here for many, many years. My good friend, Mr. Wayne Slappy. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mighty good to see you, my brother. Now, please tell me, first of all, how have you been? Well, the past month and a half, two months, been a little rough. Uh, with the loss of Kobe, obviously, um, took a lot out of me and a lot of other people. But, uh, you know, with me being close to the family, particularly uh, Jelly Bean and Pam, and it's just it's rough. It's, to, to know their pain, to try to have a clue of their pain, it's, it's tough. But we're, you know, as I, as I tell people, it's gone from the, the phase of being tsunamis on a regular basis sort of being in storms and storms that are, anything could trigger it so you know hopefully i can hold it together throughout this whole interview we have so much to talk about now um first things first you know on the day of i was sitting in church and the first person when i saw it um pop up on tmz i texted you and i asked you i said slap is this true what i've seen now when that came in it's like what was the first emotion you felt? i mean First of all, that day, I was going through every emotion possible. I went from being very sad, to disappointed, to being, you know, com completely confused, angry. I mean, it was just awful. When you called me, I, I don't know why I was numb, man. I, was, I think I told you I couldn't talk right now or something like that. You said your phone was ringing off the hook. Oh, you yeah. didn't even begin to want to answer. No, I saw your name, so I picked that up, but yeah, it was... It was weird, man. It's a weird day. And still to this day, it's like it didn't happen, but it happened. Now, prior to, um, when was the last time you had spoken to him? It's been a minute, you know. Um, I don't remember. People have asked me that question. I, I don't want to remember those things because it makes me, I, I, I want to be finished as enemy. Right, right, right. Which I understand. But, you know, Slap, um, it, it, the one thing that's amazing about this gentleman is that he's, uh, you know, you, you are a motivational speaker and you always are inspiring kids. I was privileged, actually, uh, to go to his Santa Monica gym and see him training two up and coming stars. You remember that, Slap? Yeah, a and, while ago. Yeah, that was a beautiful thing because um, even the biggest stars, um, like Michael Jordan, um, and also Russell Westbrook, one person who trained as well, they always come back to you. Now, why do they always come back to you, Slap? I don't know. I think I bring out the child in them that sometimes is not apparent to everyone else. I think I remind them of some things that made them who they are. And it's a blessing to be able to, to be that person, you know what I mean, for them. You know, when I hug Wes Russell or James Harden, I don't see the beard in James. I see the little boys, the young men. I don't want to call them little boys. <laughs> the young men. Uh, and it, it's, it's a privilege. Now, now you, the one thing amazing about Slap is that, you know, you told me, you have a, a lot of stories to be shared, but one story that's very interesting was that um, you were noticing Michael Jordan wasn't doing the same footwork that you taught him, and you kind of scolded him about that. Is that right? Well, that's what happened. I didn't have to scold him. <laughs> Fortunately, he was being interviewed. Um, I, I don't remember after which championship, because he has six. <laughs> But they said, what did you do to remember, what did you do to avoid those guys being able to defend you because they kind of know your moves and everything. So I had to remember to go back to my triple threat, which is what I taught them, you know. And I was blessed to be able to be at Five Star Basketball Camp and teach a number of athletes, you know, as well as myself and other coaches there. But the triple threat is when you hold the ball before you dribble it. Instead of getting it like these kids do nowadays, they do all these tricks with the ball first, get exhausted, and then hopefully that defensive man makes a mistake, and then they luckily make the best. When you're triple threat, you're reading what your opponent is doing, and everything they try to do to you to defend you, you have accounted for that. And so he just went into that mode, and once he's on the loose, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Wow. Well, and you taught him that. Yeah, but. 
Yes. It's, 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 a lot of people. Yeah, he's very modest about that. But among many other movies, you taught him, and it's great that you remember that um, as well. Now, Slap, well, we've been talking, um, as the last gentleman on the show, Mr. Tyler, when you're talking about a very su uh, interesting subject in terms of uh, how ways that men can protect themselves from false allegations. Now, is that something that's pretty prevalent in the realm where you are? Whenever you deal with any professional athletes, particularly professional basketball players, with the amount of money that's being made, there are a lot of people coming at them constantly. Sometimes it's for business purposes, sometimes it's to just take advantage of them. Because they think of them as only basketball players, not as men, not as intelligent human beings, but as basketball players. And they're more than that, all of them. So yes, it, it does happen. Females in particular, they have to be particularly careful because they'll walk up to them with their wife on their arm oh, wow. and flirt. Oh wow! You know, yeah, they you know they won't even care. They'll be aggressive. Don't let the the All Star games happen. They flood the city. That the All Star games are happening. Wow! Now, now um, the the gentleman you train, the ones that come into that big money, or even before they come into that big money, what kind of advice do you give? Well, I just try to do the best that I can to tell them to you know be careful what you do when you open your zipper. Mm -hmm. You know and to try to, any women that you're going to deal with, to try your best to um, simply <laughs> don't look at them as their best person, as sexual beings first. Look at them as human beings mm -hmm. and see what they have to bring to the table beside their bodies. But now, so like a lot of them, like you mentioned, All Star Game, like we just passed last month in Chicago, they don't want to be looked upon as anything beyond sexual objects for that night. The female? Yes, correct. So, how is the guy? Some of those females, that? well, that's hard. I mean, that's really tough. I'll just tell you about one situation. It doesn't have to be an all star game. I'll tell you about one situation. I was training a young man named Sean Kellogg. And uh, Jelly Bean and I actually. And he got a phone call one day in his hotel room. This woman called up and said, Hi, Sean. I called 10 hotels, I, no, I'm sorry, hi Sean, I heard you were in town, I called 10 hotels till I found you. <laughs> so we had to take him out of that hotel, it was in Ritz Carlton in, in the marina, put him in, in a hotel in Santa Monica on Ocean Boulevard, not the fancy hotels, the other more boutique hotels that were nice, and put him in there under an assumed name. Wow, wow. Because I guess um, Sean would have probably would have jumped on that opportunity knowing. Well, Sean had weakness, <laughs> you know, which is well, very well known. I won't go into any further than that. Wow, but yeah, wow. he had a weakness, and hopefully he's overcome that. You know, but it cost him a whole lot of money. Oh, wow, wow. So now, Slap, um, going on to your filming career. Now, there's a lot of things you love doing and you're very good at, including the basketball you all speak about. But tell us a little bit about some of the movies and scripts that you write. Well, first of all, I, I, I love telling stories, and I love telling stories that deal with the human experience. I don't, I'm not very good at comedy, so I write most of the drama. You're not like a funny guy, you have to, you, know, you, can, you can't do any stand-up stuff like that? No, nah, those <laughs> guys especially. Uh -huh. uh, no, but I, I try to tell stories that come out of some of my life experiences, sometimes out of things I've read and researched about. Uh, historical individuals in some cases. Uh, the one project I'm working on right now is a basketball piece that actually happens in my hometown of North New Jersey. And it's an interesting love story. That's all I'll say about it. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Okay, I won't touch you behind that. Mm -hmm. But um, that's something that's probably gonna be coming out this year. I hope we'll make it this year. Hopefully we'll be ready be prepared in 2021. Oh wow, wow. That's fascinating. But you know, I'm slap being now you consider yourself still a Jersey and you consider yourself a California. Because you've been out here for what, twenty six years now? Yes, sir, but uh I'm I'm always gonna be from Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like you feel about Chicago, right. Newark is very much the same. It helped to mold me into who I am, it helped to make me be able to identify, look through people and pay attention to what's around me instead of walking around like a crew of a <laughs> I don't do that very well. 
But you know, um, so that is, is, is really amazing though that you've been able to endure some really, really tough storms and stuff. You know, one thing after we come back from this commercial break, you don't know about him. We're going to talk about it in a minute. He has an affiliation with the sitcom Good Times. We'll talk about that. Oh, right yeah. Yeah. Yep, indeed. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. Having a wonderful time talking to my really good friend, Mr. Wayne Slappy. Wisdom, life lessons, and all of the things he has going on. Now, um, in my last segment, I was mentioning his affiliation with Good Times. Well, this man was actually, Esther Rowe was his surrogate mother. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, you've known her for many years, and that was really our leading conversation when we first met six years ago. Now, how did she become his surrogate? I was working in theater at the time in New Jersey, and the producer, a uh, good friend of mine, Pamela Goodlove Gray, she asked me to be her host when she came to town. And so I ended up taking her out to eat, teaching her how to swim, you know, a host of conversations, and little by little, you know, we just became close. And uh, my mother, unfortunately, passed away when I was my birth mother. That's when I was 14. And Esther kind of took her place when I needed that adult advice and everything. Uh, and it was just a wonderful affiliation. I mean, I, I mean, I stayed in the house when I first moved out here. You know. She's a wonderful, her. wonderful person. Now, what are some of the things you've learned from her over the years? Okay, the best lesson I could tell you is that her mother and father, when her father was dating her mother, he asked her, excuse me, she asked him, if you want to marry me, you got to make sure all my kids are educated and I want to make sure that we go to America. That was a promise he had to fulfill. So it took him 10 kids, Esther was number 10, out of 18 to finally come to America. She was the first one born in America. Now, by the time Esther came along, she actually thought her mother had been educated, but her mother never went to school. She went to school through her children. And how she did that was every day, she would ask her, her young people, what did you learn today? Now, that made a couple of things happen. When you go to school, you go home going, uh-oh, I better be able to answer these questions, and I better know how to talk without mumbling, fumbling through this. Because if I don't say it clearly, she knows I don't know it. So they learned, and then she learned through them. Yeah. Wow. Well, now, Slack, one thing that was very interesting you told me about her as well is that Norman Lear wanted to have her as a single mother. Oh, yeah. And how, what was her stance on that? Well, she's like, no, 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 I owe it to my father to make sure there's a dad on this show. Wow. Yeah. And that's why when uh, John Amos was taken off the show, uh, she told him, well, look, I could do this show for another year, but these young people, I haven't been putting their money aside. I need to make sure they know they need to put their money away so they can take care of themselves, you know, after the show is over. So we'll do it for one more year. She so that really happened. was looking out for everybody. Oh, yeah. Big hearted woman. And very much missed, as a matter of fact. And um, that was what I, one of the first things you spoke about mm -hmm. when you were, uh, when we, first met six years ago. Now Slap, um, I know a lot of people, you probably can have instant fans, but all the viewers and people watching now, where can people be able to uh, keep up with you? On Facebook, social media? Oh, Lord. Now I'm on Facebook once in a while, so don't go there. <laughs> but you can catch me on Instagram, it's my name on Instagram. It's just my name on Facebook as well. And uh, that's about it. You know Slap, the thing is I want to really say about you that I really appreciate it. I want you all to get this is that um, I'm very humbled and honored to have him on the show. I'm always thankful for anyone who stops by the Sherrard Show, but uh, slapping for, you know, coming in, out here in L.A. and just taking me on his wing, schooling me about the neighborhood, <laughs> schooling me about oh, things yeah, to look yeah. out for and stuff, you know. And it was a, just such a different perspective, and it really was effective. I really appreciate that. And then also, um, you know, just coming here, leaving my little family to make, um, mm -hmm. make it, and he was always here for me. Um, anything I needed coming over his house, you know, chopping out, uh, chopping it up with him and, you know, just a lot of things I can talk about off camera just as a good, good man, good dude. I really appreciate Slap. Thank you so much, my Thanks brother. for having me. Thanks for having me. This, is, this, is, this, is, this man is as genuine as just peering out uh, for this interview. I'm Sherrard. When we come back, we're going to have our latest celebrity information. Gossip, ladies and gentlemen, from Disco.
right after this.